Hey everyone, Truth Surge here again. Thanks for joining me. And I'm bringing you another episode of Jesus, Hebrew, Human, or Mythical Messiah, The Exceptions. And we're going to look at another problem passage that uh, Jesus myth haters love to wave about as some kind of banner of debunction. Um, it's 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 15 and 16. And the reason this is problematic is because Paul is blaming the Jews for the death of Jesus. And he's uh, he's pretty hard on the poor old Jews, uh, saying that they're contrary to all men and contrary to God and and so forth and so on. <clears throat> so this is clearly a problem for the Jesus myth theory, because if Paul really believed Jesus was killed by the Jews, well, that's pretty, uh, pretty hard to get around as far as Jesus being on earth and, and corroborating, you know, corroborating the gospel story. Um, so this uh, will be a little bit more interesting than the previous exceptions we looked at. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and I think I'm going to be able to make a pretty clear-cut case uh, for this not being a problem. But before we look at it, I wanted to touch real briefly on the difference between how I'm looking at the exceptions to the Jesus myth theory or the problem passages and the way apologists try to explain away the problems they find uh, in the Bible and then later say, oh, they're not really problems. And, you know, you know how they do. Well, I wanted to touch on that just real briefly because um, I thought it was important, you know, to put that out and show that there is a difference. Uh, you know, Christians want to say it's, a, it's, a, it's always a level playing field, and it's not. <clears throat> I don't have a vested interest in whether the Jesus myth theory is true or false. I was an atheist before I ran into the Jesus myth theory. If Jesus was a real person and he became legendary over time, I'm still going to be an atheist. I'm still going to be a non-Christian. So I don't have a vested interest, but on the other hand, uh, Christians and apologists have a vested interest, and I would go so far as to say they have an ultimate vested interest, because if the Jesus myth theory is true, it destroys their worldview. And so they cannot accept any truths that we may display along the way, um, such as what you're going to see in this video. So there is a, there's a complete difference, and I would, I would say there's a fundamental difference, a core difference in how I approach this and how a, an apologist might approach um, a problem inside the Bible, a contradiction. Um, so I wanted to, uh, you know, say a little, little bit about that because I think there's a, there's a huge difference in it, and it's really uh, the core of it is um, that when you worship the main character of the story you're professing to study, then how can you be unbiased and open-minded? I don't think you can be. So, with that said, I don't want to take up any more time because I want to get right to it. And in this video, I'm not going to do a bunch of bells and whistles. I'm going to uh, basically enumerate the pieces of evidence that I'd like to show you. And then at the very end, we'll summarize them again. And I think you're going to find uh, this quite convincing. So let's go ahead and uh, do some more digging. And uh, let's get to the bottom of this because something just doesn't sound right to me about this. And uh, you know me, I've got to dig until I find the truth, the truth, the truth. Of the 27 documents that make up the New Testament, Many scholars believe that seven were written by a single man, Paul the Apostle. Scholars also believe that the earliest of these letters, and in fact the earliest example of any Christian writing whatsoever, is that of 1 Thessalonians. It is here, in the second chapter, that we find Paul laying the blame for the death of Jesus squarely on the shoulders of the Jews alone. For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea, for you also endured the same sufferings at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out, 
They are not pleasing to God, but hostile to all men, hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved, with the result that they always fill up the measure of their sins, but wrath has come upon them to the utmost. This is highly problematic for the Jesus myth theory, to say the least, but we can solve this problem with a very simple and elegant solution. Paul was not the author. I believe this passage was inserted into a copy of the epistle by a very anti-Semitic Gentile Christian of the Orthodox persuasion. It should be noted, first of all, that all of the copies of 1 Thessalonians in existence do contain the verses in question, but that does not negate any of the evidence I am about to present. It simply means that we do not have a copy without the insertion. Paul wrote one letter to the Gentiles in Thessalonica in the mid-50s. It would naturally be copied and distributed among the group, but perhaps even several decades later, only one copy got sent from there to another group of believers in another geographical region, where the Orthodox view was then in force, and the next copy to be made from that copy would be fair game for the insertion, as most early Christian ecclesia or assemblies were Gentile, as can be seen from the regions Paul was writing to and from Paul's own admissions that he was forced to turn to the Gentiles when the Jews on the whole were not receptive to his new gospel message. It makes sense that the insertion is therefore an Orthodox Gentile Christian blaming the Jews for the death of Jesus. Precisely how and when this insertion occurred, we'll never know. And now for some hardcore evidence that will support the idea that Paul did not write the passage in question. Point number one. There is a precedent of willful edits and insertions into the New Testament documents. It is a well-known fact that the writings of the New Testament have not only been accidentally altered from the originals, but also been willfully altered as well. There are over 5,000 New Testament manuscripts with a mind-boggling number of variations totaling into the hundreds of thousands. Admittedly, most of them are small variations, misspellings, or at least forgivable mistakes made by amateur scribes, but many are not. Many are the willful alterations of those who either saw a deficiency in the original, which usually itself was only a later copy, or someone who wanted to further their own theological beliefs. But what about these alleged willful insertions into the New Testament manuscripts? Are there any well-known cases that we could quickly put on the table? Yes, more and more scholars are recognizing the inescapable fact that the New Testament has been changed over time, not just in small, unimportant details, but in radical ways that often involve entire accounts being added or even the addition of entire chapters. Bart Ehrman is one such scholar. In his book, Misquoting Jesus, he enumerates seemingly countless cases of alterations and at the back of the book, he lists his top ten verses that were never originally part of the New Testament. These verses are some of the most famous of all, and ironically, were never even part of the original documents. They were inserted decades and even sometimes hundreds of years later. It may be instructive at this point to simply examine one case in detail, to show why many scholars understand that the New Testament we have today is a patchwork quilt created over thousands of years by thousands of anonymous hands.